Today, what I'm going to show you is exactly how to build AI agents and deploy them so that they can basically automate anything. And the results have been absolutely wild. I'm going to show you some of the best ways you can use this and how it integrates for free directly with DeepSeek version three. So you can actually leverage these free AI agents with this tool right here. I'll show you how to set it up in a second and then you can insert APIs directly into it and you can get access to DeepSeek version three's API, which is one of the latest AIs on the internet. So let's get straight into this. And the way that we're gonna set this up is we're gonna run it locally. We are hosting it locally. Now it's pretty easy to get that set up. All you need to do is go to web UI, GitHub, and then from here, just make sure you have Python installed. Pretty simple and easy to do. All you do is you go to your terminal, copy this, and then do the rest. Now from there, you can easily set this up inside the terminal. So you would just copy and paste the commands from here. So you just copy this, go to terminal. So first of all, you're gonna clone this repository, then run this Python code. So you can see inside the terminal here, basically what we've done is we've copied all of these to create the virtual environment. Now we can run this command, wait a minute or so for that to load. And then you're gonna have the local address that you can navigate to as you can see here. So if you click on this, open up, now we've got web UI ready to go. Super simple and easy to do. So just to recap there, you copy all of these commands into terminal. Then from there, you're gonna run the web UI. And once that's done, you can just navigate to this address. Now from here, what you're gonna see is that you can use web UI in a very simplified way to control your browser with AI assistance. Now you can switch between agent types. You can select org or custom. I'm gonna stick with custom today. And then here you can also see how many steps you can have, right? So the longer it is, the more complex a prompt can be because you allow more steps in the process. You can also set up how many actions you want the agent to take per step. And you can decide whether you want to use vision or not. Bear in mind, if you're using DeepSeek version three, the API, then that does not have vision inside it. So you won't use that. And then once you've gone to the LLM configuration section, you'll see these options. Now you can select DeepSeek and then DeepSeek chat right here. And you've got two options here. You can either use the really, really cheap version of the DeepSeek version three API, or even better, if you go to Hyperbolic, as a new user, you get $10 in platform credits when you sign up. So you can use the DeepSeek API for free. You just change the endpoints, as you can see, plug that into web UI, and you can use DeepSeek version three's API for free and you can use web UI for free, which means none of this costs you a penny. The other option that you have for using this for free is that you can navigate to aistudio.google.com, grab an API key, it's completely free, select Gemini from the list, then you can choose between these models. I'm gonna go with Flash Experimental, plug in the API key like so, and then we are ready to go on that. Now, you're gonna see these options, so you can actually choose whether you use your own browser to keep the browser open or headless mode, I'm just going to stick with the default options for now. You can choose how wide and how high you want the browser and also where to record the videos because actually when the AI is using your browser, everything is recorded as a screencast so that you can see the activity that happened along with the process. Now, if we go to run agent over here, we can actually give it a command in terms of what we want it to do. And additionally, you can actually set up optional hints to help the LLM complete the task. This is really useful because now you can set up custom instructions and context for the AI. So let's say, for example, you are outsourcing SEO tasks to your AI agent. Well, that AI agent can then have custom instructions on exactly how you want the egg. Like, for example, you're an SEO expert. You're a semantic SEO expert. Here's how you do semantic SEO research, etc. Right, And you can brief it really well here so it completes the task much better here. And the more context you give this AI agent, the better it's going to perform. Now. Let me show you some examples of prompts because it's absolutely amazing what you can do. For example, we can actually get the AI to go off, use another AI and code websites or tools or apps for us. Let me show you an example of that. So I'm gonna plug in this prompt, which says, go to llamacoda.together.ai and build some cool tools from SEO agency. Be prepared to wait for a few minutes for the outputs. This is really important because otherwise what's gonna happen is it's gonna just go off and create the tool. And instead of like waiting for the tool to code, it's just gonna go, oh, okay, job done now, right? So you want it to wait around for a few minutes and then also be really specific with the tool plus the instructions you want and test it out. Keep the tool simple. Once it's finished loading, test it out. Once done, download the code. Slash copy it and return it to me, right? So basically what it's gonna do is it's going to grab the code that it got from the tool. Then it's going to give you the output so that you can use it later on, right? So it's gonna create a tool, build it, test it out, save the code, give it back to you. And then you've got a tool ready to go 
and you're using your AI to speak to other AIs to build different things out. Let me show you an example of how this works in practice. So if we click on run agent like so, what it's going to do now is it's going to open up this browser, as you can see, and it's basically analyzing the screen and looking at where should it type. So you can see it's actually building out this tool for keyword ideas. And now it's creating a project plan around that with Llama Coda, right? So it's leveraging the power of Llama Coda, which is an AI tool and using its AI knowledge to build out a tool using this coder, right? So your AIs can speak to other AIs and then you've got all these agents running without you and you save a lot of time along the way. Now you've got the keyword idea generator. And if we go to the results section over here, we can actually watch the screen recording back of what it did, right? So you can see the screencast of what happened during that task so that if you're working on another task in the meantime, you can test this out and see what actually happened whilst you were away. And you can see how it tested out, what it was doing, etc. But here's the other interesting thing. So now inside the final result, which is basically the AI's output, it said the keyword generator tool has been created and the code is copied to clipboard. Now I'm done. So if we go to a new Google Doc and we click on paste without formatting, we can actually see that it's copied all the code from the app we just created. And basically the AI went off, used an AI, created a tool, came up with an idea for the tool, tested it actually worked, and then got the code and returned it back to us, right? And we didn't really have to do anything apart from a very simple prompt, which you can see right here. And again, none of this costs us any money. Now imagine on the other side of this, the flip side of this, if you were to find a developer, hire a developer, pay them, filter them out, select the best candidates, test them out, make sure they actually did everything they needed to, and then get back to you how long that would take and how much pain that would cause, right? The difference is, it's just absolutely amazing that you can get an AI agent to do all of this for you on autopilot and it required very little input or work or thought from us. It's also terrifying, let's be honest. And that was just prompt number one. We've got more prompts to show you. So let's make it do some keyword research for us now. We're gonna go back to run agent, delete that, plug this in. I'm gonna say you're an SEO expert for Julian Goldie's SEO agency. And then I'm gonna hit run agent like so. And it can actually just go off to Google and start Googling stuff for us. So you can see it's now Googling local SEO agency and it's looking at the autocomplete on Google to figure out, okay, what are some other keywords that we could rank for related to that topic? And that really just took a few seconds, but if we go to the results now and I'll open this in the new Google Docs so you can see some ideas, it's found us a bunch of keyword ideas like so that we could easily rank for based on the autocomplete from Google. Now you might be at this point going, all right, Julian Goldie, that seems like magic, but I are any of these keywords actually decent? Are people searching for them? Are they easy to rank for, etc.? Because for all you know, AI could have hallucinated this or made something up, right? So if we take a keyword like local SEO agency Dubai, which is what the AI came back to us with, we're going to go to a paid tool, which is Ahrefs Keyword Explorer, and just test out. You can see this does have traffic potential. And this is a really easy keyword to rank for, even in a highly competitive niche, right? Local SEO, every SEO is trying to rank for it. Very difficult to rank for. And so if we scroll down to the first page, we don't need many backlinks to rank for it, right? Pretty simple and easy to rank for. And if we scroll up, we just saved ourselves so much time because now the AI is doing that for us, right? And it's just gone off, found us a decent amount of keywords so we can easily rank for related to our topic. And again, required minimal prompting. So now let's try another one. So let's try another one for blog writing. So we're going to say Google the best SEO training in Japan, click on the top ranking blog, scroll through the page, and then quickly write an article on the same topic, Alex from Mosey style. So it's opening up a new tab, navigates straight to Google, clicks on the first link, and it's having a cheeky gander at the page. Now it's scrolling down, having a look through the page. And the fact that it can just interact with the browser as well is really good. The one thing that I would say is it still feels a little bit retro compared to, say, the experience that you get when you're using ChatGPT or something like that, right? So these prompts might work really nicely today. Don't expect it to work for you every single time. Like, it's pretty wild what it can do. But obviously it's still buggy. This is a free tool. Don't expect miracles, but it's wild. And that really didn't take long at all. So we'll go to the results now. You can see here, it actually took 51 seconds to do that. And then it said, here's a breakdown in Alice or Moses style. And let's have a look at the content. So it says, look, most SEO agencies, they're serving up the same generic garbage, hoping something sticks. Julian Goldie, he's in the trenches, understand the Japanese market like the back of his hand, right? Content itself feels pretty humanized. Not bad for a first attempt. I'm sure you can tweak it and make it a lot better. Obviously that's just like the first paragraph, but you get the point. Like you can use this to create content based on your competitors, reverse engineer the SERPs, reverse engineer what's already ranking, 
and then create your blog content based on what Google really likes to see. What you also see in this tab over here is a recording section. So you can scroll through all the previous recordings that you've made, all the previous results, and this absolutely stacks up. You can see how many times we've used it. And again, this didn't cost us a penny because you can use the DeepSeek API with Hyperbolic, which gives you $10 for free, or you can just use Gemini and that's free as well. Now let's get it to do some shopping with us. So I'm going to say, find me the best price for a Rolex online. I say you are Julian Goldie's personal shopper. Hit run agent. Let's see what it does, whether it can see what sort of taste it has when it comes to watches. So it's scrolling through, it's gone, having a cheeky gander through the Rolexes, seeing which one it likes scrolling through the page, grabbing all the prices. For actually just collecting data in general, it could be really good. You, imagine if you're in an e-commerce store and you need a lot of like product descriptions or product ideas, etc., or even niche research and industry research, this could be really powerful. And this all runs in the background, right? So you can do other tasks and then come back to it, see what it did in this separate browser. The one thing that I'm really looking forward to actually is the updates that come from ChatGPT. Apparently their operator, AI agent, is coming out this month. And I think that'll be a much more polished version of these sort of AI agents that just works in a much smoother way. And the main problem with these AIs is number one, they're a little bit technical to set up. And then number two, it's not that smooth when you use them. So if we scroll to results now, it said the best price for a Rolex watch I could find on the page is 270,000 baht for a Rolex Oyster Perpetual with an additional 700 baht for shipping. All right, so the final prompt that we're gonna test out now is I'm gonna say, give me five ideas for a YouTube video about AI based on what's already doing well on YouTube today. Let's go and plug that in and see what it comes back with. Now, in that example, I actually just went for a cheeky cup of tea and then came back. And you can see it actually gave us the results here. So it said, based on current trends from the AI video idea generators, here's some examples, which are not bad at all. And then if we play through this, you can see what it was doing was just going to these different AI tools. I do the fact that it can just interact with the web, right? It can just go off, visit websites, any sort of websites without a login, it's gonna have no problem interacting with. The only issue you're gonna find is number one, if it has a verification check, and then number two, if you have to log in. I don't think that it can do that for you right now. Maybe in the future it can. And then if you ever wanna stop it, while it's running a task, you can just click on stop, tap it a couple of times, and it should be stopping right there. So thanks so much for watching. What I've actually done is plug that into my free SEO course with all the video notes and prompts from today. This free course comes with tons of SEO tutorials with other lessons, along with a community of 3,000 SEOs and 50 free ASEO tools. And inside this free SEO course, you're also going to find a section on SEO systems, free SEO tools. And if you scroll down to the AI agent section, which you can see right here, you'll see all these different AI agents that you can get access to along with the notes and video notes from today. Along with that, if you link to get the free SEO course is inside the comments description, feel free to get that. And additionally, if you want to get a free one-to-one -one SEO strategy session, feel free to put that in. We'll show you how we take websites from zero to 145,000 visits a month and generate hundreds of thousands of dollars in sales on autopilot. On this free link building acceleration session, you get a free SEO domination plan. So you get a custom tailored link building plan so you can get more leads, sales, and profits from your website. Additionally, you'll discover the secrets of SEO link building. We'll answer any questions you have one-to-one. -one. You learn the best link building strategy for your website, plus how to quickly outrank your competitors in link building and how to 10x SEO traffic based on what's working for us. Thanks so much for watching. Appreciate it. Bye-bye.